morning, Endeavor, from the planning shift. It's great to be with you. Uh, we're also known now as the Atlas Flight. Uh, as you know, uh, Paul Hill is our uh, planning shift flight director, and uh, this is his first official mission, and uh, earlier today he chose the name Atlas for his flight. Yeah, good morning, Houston, and good morning, Paul. Dr. Thomas, will you, uh, you will be the uh, seventh and final U.S. astronaut to live on the Russian space station. In, in view of the well-publicized mishaps with the aging uh, space station last year, are you in any way apprehensive about the next four and a half months? Uh, no, not really. I don't think that there's uh, safety issues that I need to be concerned about. I think the Russians have done a very good job of stabilizing the situation on Mir following some very serious situations last year. Um, my concern more is just learning to live and function for a long time on a day-to-day -day basis in conditions which at times might be difficult. There might be difficult temperatures and uh, hard work and so on, and I think those are the more realistic concerns that I have. Dr. Thomas, uh, we should point out, is an Australian native who has undergone training at the uh, Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Russia. How is your Russian? Well, it's better than I ever thought it would be. Then again, I thought I would never need to learn Russian. Um, I enjoy learning it. Uh, I wish it was a little better. Uh, I don't have the spontaneity of language that I have, obviously, with English. But uh, I think I can communicate and I can understand what's being said, and that's the important thing. You have also uh, worked in, in your career at the Gen Propulsion Laboratory. Uh, do you have any uh, messages? you want to say hello to one of your friends in Pasadena? Oh, yeah, I still have a lot of friends there. It's a number of years since I worked there, uh, but I enjoyed the time I had there very much. It was a fascinating place to work and a wonderful place to live, and uh, I hope the people there are watching this uh, flight unfold. Very well, sir. Uh, commanding the mission is Marine Lieutenant Colonel Terrence uh, Wilcott. Uh, Colonel, this is your third shuttle mission. You've already logged uh, more than 500 hours in space. It's a uh, little different than flying combat aircraft, isn't it? Yes, quite a bit. Uh, as a matter of fact, we don't have anything on here to uh, do any combat with, thank goodness. <laughs> and uh, we'll uh, hope that it continues that way. Uh, is it still uh, as thrilling as it must have been the first time you uh, lifted off? Oh, absolutely. You can't, uh, I think Story Musgrave uh, put it right when he said that he hated asset, but he loved being in space. It's, it's definitely a thrill, and uh, I think we all uh, view asset as, something we have to go through to get into space where we do our work. This is Air Force Major Michael Anderson's first shuttle mission. Uh, Major, describe the liftoff for us and, and tell us how it was to, to lift off and then have to go to sleep so quickly. Well, actually, I was uh, pretty surprised by the launch. It was a lot smoother than I had expected. 
there was a little bit of noise, a little bit of vibration, but not nearly as much as I had expected from watching watches from uh, outside the space shuttle. Overall, it went by pretty quickly, and uh, it was a real nice ride. Um, getting up on space, we had about five hours before we had to uh, prepare to go to bed. It was a real busy five hours, and as you can imagine, when it was time to go to bed, it was very difficult to do. But uh, I grabbed myself a bite to eat and uh, sat in the commander's chair and looked out the window and watched the world go by and eventually managed to catch a few hours of sleep. Also on board is Cosmonaut, Salazan Sharapov. Uh, Cosmonaut, is this your first trip into space, and, and what are your impressions? Um, my impression is very great because uh, it's very interesting work with uh, my American colleagues. And uh, in uh, every step, every day, every hour, uh, I see that uh, American authors can work hard and uh, they always uh, show me that Americans are the best than Russia. But uh, I want to say that uh, Russians are the same. Good guys and uh, Angel can uh, say it. So we uh, uh, just for fun make uh, and uh, work hard some. Do you speak better English than Dr. Thomas speaks Russian? I believe so. <laughs> like to go back to uh, Colonel Wilcott now. Colonel, you're 48 years old, older than the others on the flight, I believe, uh, but you were just a kid when John Glenn made his first space flight. How do you feel about having him back in the program? I think it's great that I would love to fly with him. He was at the, uh, the launch last night. Did you get to meet him? No, I have met Senator Glenn before. Uh, when he uh, came to Houston and received uh, a lot of briefs on the science that we do on the shuttle, that he, and he took that information back to Washington to uh, share with the other senators. Uh, so I've met him. He's a very uh, fine and distinguished gentleman. Although it's been said that sending John Glenn back into space is not an effort to give the U.S. Uh, space program a boost, uh, has it had that effect, though? I think so. Uh, literally 100% of the people I've talked to think it's a good idea. So I think that... But, you know, NASA, we're on sort of a roll anyway. We've had with the Mars uh, exploration, uh, the shuttle science, the MIR program, the International Space Station uh, getting ready to crank up. So I don't think that we really needed a boost, but uh, flying Senator Glenn, if that gave us one, then I'm glad to get that one too. Briefly, can you give us uh, an idea of what some of the supplies uh, are that you have on board that you'll be taking to the MIR? I'm one of them, actually. I'm one of the main things that they're going to transfer to Mir, and I'll be on Mir for uh, four months. So to support me in that period, uh, they're taking, obviously, a lot of food, a lot of water, clothing, some equipment that I'll need uh, on Mir uh, to operate with the uh, Russian systems, but also uh, a suite of experiments that I'll be operating during my time on Mir, since that's one of the main functions that I'll have while I'm up there. The sight of Earth from, from space, uh, we've seen pictures and we know something of what it looks like, but still nothing of what it feels. What did it feel like to you? Well, it's breathtaking. Uh, pictures don't do justice to the way the Earth looks uh, with your own eyes from this uh, vantage point. You know, it's just a beautiful place. It's just a wonderful creation. And uh, when I first got my glimpse of Earth from up here, it, uh, it's just uh, impossible to describe. It's a fantastic view. Not, I imagine not many um, African-American youngsters, when you were a child, actually aspired to, to space travel or space work. Um, how did you come upon this desire, this aspiration? Well, you know, I think for me it was a combination of a number of things. Uh, my father was in the Air Force, so my exposure was to a lot of uh, high-tech things, a lot of airplanes and a lot of the uh, gadgetry that the Air Force had at the time. And also just the, uh, an, in, an interest in science fiction. I was a big science fiction fan as a kid. I watched all kind of television shows like Lost in Space and Star Trek. And I think just from watching those shows and seeing what those people were doing and from going to work with my dad and, and seeing what he did, just kind of developed a natural interest in me to want to do something like that. Wonderful. Commander Wilcott, this is, of course, the third space mission for you. Um, does it get uh, repetitive for you, or does the excitement recur each and every time? 
Oh, we only get to do this about every uh, year and a half, uh, if you're lucky enough to do that. And so it certainly never gets repetitive. It's exciting every single time. And how did you come to the space program? Well, uh, sort of the same way. I also, I guess, was always interested in uh, in space just from the, uh, the science fiction, the movies, whatever. But so I was nearing my the end of my tour as a test pilot, and I was thinking about what I wanted to do next. Uh, a good friend of mine that was already in the astronaut program uh, asked me if I would be interested in that, and it seemed like a way to continue, uh, really, the work that you do as a test pilot. And uh, you get to work with a lot of very, very bright young engineers and scientists, and and uh, so it seemed like something I'd be interested in. Dr. Uh, Andy Thomas, you're, uh, uh, as I understand it, the last person the shuttle will deliver to the space station Mir before the construction begins on the, on the new International Space Station. What exactly will you do or will be doing between now and then to prepare for the construction uh, of, uh, uh, of the new sta space center? Well, you're correct. I will be the last U.S. representative on the Mir Space Station following six predecessors who have all done very good jobs under some kind of sometimes very trying circumstances. I'll be spending my time on the Mir Space Station uh, running a suite of experiments that are from U.S. sponsorship, uh, looking at the effect mostly of long-duration spaceflight on uh, the behavior of the human body. And I'll also be supporting the cosmonauts in operating and maintaining the space station and uh, keeping it flying. So I expect it to be uh, pretty busy during my time there. And that kind of experience, obviously, is going to feed directly into the International Space Station because it's going to give us guidance on how you should operate one of these large orbiting vehicles. Major Anderson, back to you again. If there is one space mission, either conceived or yet not conceived, that you'd like to be on and you'd like to be a part of, what would it be? I think that's an easy question for me. I, I always thought it would be nice to, uh, to go to Mars, and that's something that I think uh, the space program is going to be looking uh, rather closely at very soon here, and that's something that I think every astronaut in the program would really like to be a part of. You know, a trip to another planet to uh, explore that planet and see what's out there is something that uh, would be very exciting for anyone.